Today I want to talk about my passion fruit hopped mead that I made on a live stream. It's right here. Let's get started. All right, so this is called the Passion Gone Sour Blues. And that's a name that my, um, whenever I was making this on Twitch or on a live stream, I had them uh, give me some names and that's the name we ended up with. It is a um, passion fruit mead. Now, the trick here is we didn't use real passion fruit. We used uh, the Amaretti flavoring, which if you're familiar with the channel, I've used it quite a bit or used Amaretti in general. And I, I have no problem with them. I think they're great. So. Um, they allow you to make some different, get some different flavors that you might not normally be able to get. Now I'm enjoying this outside because it's pretty hot. This is a cold mead and I think it'll be even more enjoyable this way. So let me tell you about the, uh, the actual recipe for this. So this thing going off the top of my head, I'll put it on the screen of course, is was two pounds and three ounces of blueberry honey, three ounces of this Amaretti passion fruit flavoring, about two grams of the Philly sour yeast, water, of course, and um, then we used priming sugar to bottle carbonate it, and I used erythritol to back sweeten it, which is a non-fermentable but natural sugar. So this mead should be carbonated, theoretically. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and crack it open, and I'll, as I'm doing this, I'll tell you the whole process. We're gonna see if it's carbonated. Ah, that's carbonated. Now it's been, I put the priming sugar in, about 11 days ago. So this it normally takes about two to three weeks. I'm, I might be rushing this a little bit, but I still think it'd be good. It's obviously had a little bit of carbonation there, or it has some, we're gonna find out. Oh man, that looks so good. Yeah, that is carbonated. It's like not a super amount of carbonation, but it's definitely carbonated. It's got a nice color. It's, it's a little hazy, which I don't have any problem with that. But, um, Ooh, yeah, you get the passion fruit on the nose. Even that the little three ounces that I made, um, used, excuse me, are enough to really fill this out. So this mead was made on a live stream and uh, it was, I just mixed up the honey, water, yeast, all of those things and let it start fermenting. It started at about 1062, I think was the, the starting gravity. And then um, of course, after fermentation, it actually ended at 1.000, which was great. Um, when we back sweetened, I didn't get a final gravity on it, which is fine. It's probably like 1010 or something. So we're looking at, I think that's somewhere in that realm of like 8% ish for this mead. And it's like a session mead. Um, when I mix that stuff up, the, the interesting thing about the Philly sour yeast is that it takes a little while to start going. Um, it has a long lag phase. So, uh, and I, I know this for a fact because my friend doing the most um, also has used this yeast before and hit the same roadblocks. His actually took 72 hours in a recent brew. This one took about 48 before it really started going. The thing with the Philly sour yeast is it's producing lactic acid. So it has a different mouth feel, or not producing it. The lactic acid fermentation is a little bit different than your just normal wine yeast or ale yeast, for example. I don't remember how much erythritol I used, but it's a little bit drier than I thought. I could use a little more sweetness. The passion fruit flavoring is there, which is nice. And I'm thankful that it popped through the primary. The carbonation is nice. It's very refreshing. Actually, I don't mind that it's a little drier. It's not like on the sour side by any means, but it's not like so in your face sweet that it's like just too much. It's got a, a nice level of sweetness. Ooh, and the, the thing that's interesting about this, of course, carbonation helps in providing like a bigger mouthfeel or body to this thing, but it, it also has more mouthfeel because of the lactic fermentation from the Philly sour yeast. That yeast itself produces and allows for a different kind of fermentation, which produces a different mouthfeel in general. Yeah, this carbonation is super nice. Um, I would say that I, I didn't like the lack of sweetness at the beginning, but I do think it's actually turned out to be very good. Once I came out of that primary state, I basically uh, just racked it into a new container and I pretty quickly actually ended up uh, putting my erythritol in and then also including about 25 grams of priming sugar to get this going. Now this one, 
I can't remember how big of a batch it was, but anyways, I've made a lot of stuff since then. It, uh, it, it took about, I mean, this is, we're 10 days into bottle carving, and I do believe that it might actually become even more carbonated over the next week or so, but I like the carbonation level as it is. Yeah, so this, this passion fruit mead is, uh, it's a session mead, and a session mead is essentially just like a lower ABV, kind of in that hydromel range. But it's really good, and I would highly recommend anyone who wants to experiment with odd flavors or anything like that to actually try to use the Amaretti flavorings. Of course, if you have access to things, great. Use like the, the real things, uh, real fruit or whatever. But if you need to or want to make something that you can't really get to, Amaretti does a lot of great stuff. And I only had to use three ounces for this to pop through. Um, I think it's strong enough too. I'm a big fan of this. I've made a previous, I previously made another passion fruit mead. I think I tried to dry hop it. Did not turn out as good as this. The thing that's helpful here um, is having some sweetness. And then I think the lactic acid fermentation from the Philly sour yeast has actually really, really helped this mead as well. So I highly encourage you to check out the Philly sour yeast. Um, of course, check out this flavoring if you'd like to do it. The recipe is right here, but this has been a, a very nice mead. It's very hot. You can tell I'm already like getting kind of sweaty because it's about 90 degrees outside. But this is something I could and I will crush very quickly. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and I have lots of other videos on the channel. Um, I'll hopefully see you then or see you on another one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.